Hello guys, welcome back to our video series. So, in part 2, we're able to create a register user API. And also in our user class, we able to implement the uh, registration of the user in the user service class. So, in this part 3, we are going to create a login. So, the user already registered, so we check if the user is there and then we generate the GW to begin. So let's start by adding our uh, a user service interface. So the same, we are going to use user task, then hold type user manager service, and then we have to name it as login user. Same we are using as we it here. And so we are going to use the login view model. So this is already in our shared class library. So basically it's just a property. So that model. All right, so we have created. So if you are going to view this from the definition, so it's just like that. Okay, so we have yeah, email which is string plant of pp and is required and validation is ml address and the password is also string of pp minimum length is five all right so that's already in our class library okay so after creating this user service method login like user async so we need to go to our user service so you can see there's already a read marker because we have been added uh a new signature and it has not implemented so we are going to implement all right so we have now the login async so we'll start to add our function here functionality here so the login async all right so the logic here is we need to find the user in our database, right? So this is a variable user. And then we already injected the user manager. So we user manager that find it's already defined now. Huh? Find email async. So because our our username is by email address, so we pass the module that email address. Amen. All right, so let's check it. So we need to mark this as a sync as well. So this is asynchronous. And since that a sync, we have to put the await keyword there. So this is just a sync await, so non blocking, uh, non blocking. So it means to say that if they're still processing some method will not block other method but it will just go on until it's done and will go back to the first or calling that method that's, it. that's process is awaiting so that's that's the that's the process of async await so your your program will be response uh oh uh, uh what's the term i forgot so you're uh responsive or responsive meaning if you click a certain function it will not block it will just bypass and call the other function and just turn until it's done okay so we have now the variable user so if user equals none so we are not able to find the user so basically we just return the user manager response uh, this is this we already find this constant class error message uh, no user email
Wait, user manager is fine. What do you know? So we can access the property. And this is the constant class, class where we sit and then we define the constant. So we will use our email here. And then this success of course is equals to false. Alright, that's it. And then another checking. Uh, we need to check the password, right? So uh result it was an user manager, ATP. There are less of predefined method here. So we'll check. Password the same, I think. and then if you can see this, you have two parameters here the user and of course the password, so model password. All right, so that's it. But since this is asynchronous, we have to put on here. What's the name? User manager change password. It's not change password. It's all right so if not the result is true so we may need to say that there is no no password for that email or not existing so we need to return And we need to manage the system. Yeah. Like that. And it's just the message. So the message is class. Then invalid password. And then this success property is also false. Okay. It's next we need to we're able to check the miss uh the user the password so what's the next one is we need to provide the claims okay so security service for this so we can generate the token all right so your things we need to put an array here an array of things so we need to us new thing of us and this property claim this System security that games so we are to pass the games email and the value is the model that email. That is one game that we have. Then we need to pass claim again and it will be the claim type. Claim type is name identifier so what's the identifier we're going to use the user id all right so we have now an array of claims okay so let's go here okay. no claim type identifier User ID. Oh, an R. Last which five in type on value. 
argument claim type will be string. What's here? So we miss a uh, close here. That's why it's an error. We need to close that. So we have now the claims. We have now the user password. So next we are going to implement is the secure to get the token security service. So by that we are going to create a token secure token name this so So Yes. And this is the interface. Uh, what are security challenges? Security challenges. Now we define the signature. This will be known. Secure token. So this will return our token. And we pass the stream array as stream. So we need to bring the name this. So we created the claims there, so we just pass that here. And we have to add parameters so that we can, after implementing the security token here, we just pass the the value of the generic token so we have to put the out parameter so it will return the value from the calling program so this will be the value the security token and the variable token and bring the name piece here that is the identity model token visibility and then another parameter for the string token token string this is the return token okay so after creating that interface of course you need to implement to have a concrete class the implementation so we'll create security ah uh, yeah we can have many different token uh, so this is called as this is the wt the wt security token so we can have also a uh, basic token so this is one implementation the wt security token or you can have also the basic token, so you can just implement the class, but you need to inherit the high security token, high security, high security service. So this is bring the name this interface, and then you need to implement it. Alright, so going to implement this okay so first we need to get our key key because it will be part of the generation of the token so as you can see in our app setting we have the key here we need to get the value of that so from here it's a free bar key. new. So how we are going to do that we use the symmetric system. Symmetric security. Symmetric security key. So this is uh, in the Microsoft Identity model. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. But they are being, it's been created, so it's been proven and tested, so why not use it? Okay, so we just use it. And 
have to pass the key. So we need to go in that to take it to remember this number. Did you take it yet? Ah, yeah, I think it did that. Device and then we need to access the key in the object in here. This one. So, how do we access it? So, we need to inject the, the controller constructor of this. We need to inject the I configuration. I configuration. So, it's just need the configuration. This is the extension by configuration. Then let's create the property. Alright, so that's why so, configuration like that. So from here, so we need to available this. Configuration that uh, division um, so it is in authentication. Oops. Okay, so we have the key now. It's being encrypted using the symmetric security key. All right, so this is the security. Right now, we are going to define our token. This one, so it will return so token is equal to new. We are now going to use GWT security token, and then this is the part that we need to to. need to uh, provide provide the value of our, what we are defining in the startup class this one so token token issuer so issuer We need to get this value to be part of the encryption, the security visibility taking. So The subject data by the audio. Uh, it's not capital. 
The cleans is the array of cleans that we just passed by. It's a little key. It's not capital, it's a single level. This is plural, so we just need to add this. And then after that, this is the part that we can set the expiry of your token. So the expiry will be the time that now that what do you want? One year is to expire. <laughs> uh, seconds. So we just have to add seconds home. So uh, it's minutes. Minutes. Add minutes. So for example, five minutes. Um, second is very <laughs> fast. Cannot log in info type is already expired. Okay, so that's the uh, how to set the expiry. So let's say 15 minutes. Five minutes is so fast. So anyway, if you change it in this class, you are just going to add. So you can also put this in your app setting. So anytime you change, you're not going to read it, but you just change the setting by so next one is the signing signing credentials. Here signing credentials. So what are the signing credentials? You need to pass the new signing credentials as it. Uh, we need to pass the key. Um, this is the algorithm that we will use in the coding security algorithms. So there are lots here. So we will use this part. And then I think that's it. Okay, so we already got the token and of course, wait a minute. So that's the token. Actually, we type that. That's the part of the token. Now this one we need to return as well. So let's so just add parameter to token as string. Let me call to new. Wt. Wt token. And that is of canon and so there is a make it here right right token. So right token what we are going to write token is the token value here. Okay. Okay, I think this is all right now. So we are returning token and the token as string. And we are receiving claims. So we'll go back to our user service. Here. So this is what we left behind. So, but before that, we need to register in our app setting. Uh, yeah. to register the IP services services for dependency and section 
uh, now we can use as well and this will be a security service and the concrete class is the double What's the class? Security token. Security token. We have to register that in our app setting. Now in the user service, we can add the uh, dependency and section name. So we will add and then we need to go to it the uh, build uh, this one uh, I'm not going to use the disk so I just hit this it like that so mm -hmm. all right so log in user so now here we can all right so we can just use this variable with the security service that uh secret token and this will pass the claims and of course the token here and the token is given this is the alpha run okay. So we will keyword this as option. I know this is not a string, the token is of type This one is out of string. Cannot convert security token system. Um, there's a conflict in the token on in our class here. This will be eating a plus GW token. And this will be. This is our concrete class. This is not from the ESP that we call claims. So we are defining almost the same with the identity model token security. So anyway, this is small. And our security the class is GWT is capital. So we just need to watch out that. Alright, so after that then we have to return now the response. So return now user manager response. And of course, the message is the token stream. That's our message, the token stream. And this success is the token Of course, the expiry date. We need to return to pin that valid valid term and valid term. All right, so we have finished our concrete class implementation of the login, creating, checking the username, password, and password, and we will return the tokens generated token so in the next next all right guys we're able to follow so actually i'm just also researching this there's a uh, lots of video and there's lots of documentation from the microsoft so my what what i call that is something like 
your I don't understand the term but what I'm saying that if you're just studying uh, viewing video uh, listening but you are not trying to tie or you are not trying to make it then it's useless it's nonsense you can easily forget it if you will not get your hands dirty in typing and learning how it works so you will never learn so this is the way of how i can learn more so hope, i hope that you will get your hands dirty as well that's just by seeing this video and you are not applying it because if you really not apply it then you will never learn promise you are just good in theory i, I think but you cannot do it in practical way so if you're given a project you will never be able to to do it if you are just listening video and you are not applying it so better apply it and do it step by step step by step okay so after this one so we are now ready to create our controller so we will go back to the api controller it's the authentication controller and then we need to add here uh another method and this one we call this as address from actually i have to insert and put this up on this one and this is the login login as things and this is asynchronous so we will be passing uh, the this one the from body so you can get the what you, you supply for example in the postman you supply in the body part this is where you get it from body attribute and then of course we need to log in your model and this is our model variable all right so and then since this is a thing we need to and we are going to decorate this uh, login so still post this TTP post because we are going to input this TTP post method here okay and then we are going to decorate that we'll have the endpoint just login instead of login async. All right, so that's it. And then, of course, we can put type as well. And then, first and foremost, we need to check if the model state is valid. Model state. So this is provided by MVC code. We for the is valid so it's meant to say we can have now to check the user service user is that uh login user async so this is in our user service login user async passing the model so we need to all right so it succeeded so if we stop this it is success and we need to return 200 so that is all this one so okay so to return success 200 cool. and it's it bad so we need to return bad this so these are all predefined in api controller um, Something happens here. We need to return. 
So that's it guys. So let's try to log in. We are at the bottom. So we are logging up on this issue. Okay. Let's bed. And let's try if our login is okay. By using Postman again. Because we have not created a client to consume this API. Alright, we run this. So again, by default, it will display the weather forecast system. Also, it's when our API is working. So we need to fire up our postman for this. So we have registered the user last time in our last video. So API authentication and then login. Yeah, login. So we need to put our body. So we need to just uh, email and this password. And send. Right, it's going to this controller API, so the model is passed here, and it's from body. So, try to debug it. Model set is valid, okay. So, we need to go to our user service class. So, this one, we need to check the email if it's resting. Okay, and then we need to check the password. Alright, then we need to add the claims and then now we are going to generate the secure token. So we have created this property. So that's why we are able to get the key. So that's in byte because we encoded into byte and we pass this the issuer from our configuration and Algorithm is this one, as code. So let's see if what happened here is the token that we able to generate now. It's the token payload. So this one. And then, of course, we need to return it. The token the string. So this is now the token. So this is now the secured token that we'll be using for accessing that. API protected area. So as you can see, this is a three part. There's a period here, this one. This does after that is the youth the credential. And next is the claims, the, this the and the last part is the key. So it's hard to decode because you only know the key and the issuer, the diligence, you are just the one sitting it in our, our sitting. Or you can provide it in a secured way. Okay, so we have now that token, so we will return it and validate also. So it's still valid. This is 15 minutes, so here we go. We can have the token now. Okay, so if you have this token, this is now you will use to inject in the authorization header here we use the bearer authentic bearer token like that and accessing the other protected endpoint okay so if you are accessing api so that's that's for now in this video and in part four we will use that 
we will access a uh, protected area of the in, of the API endpoint and we will pass this token and let's figure it out if we can access or uh, how the JW token is in action. So guys, happy learning. If you learn something from now, so subscribe the button and don't forget to help <laughs> to hit the bell button so we'll be updated in the upcoming video. So this is a series, so we are not done yet. So bye and thank you for watching. Comment below for your suggestion or suggestion or comment or recommendation or anything you see, just comment that I will take it as a helpful tip. So uh yeah. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.